Hey guys, my name is Ashwin and I'm a developer at Madesafe. So we are a small group of really enthusiastic people trying to rebuild the internet. So we have we are building something known as a safe network where safe stands for secure access for everyone. So right here I've opened the safe network website. Uh, there's a lot of information that you can gather from this website, stuff that we're working on, what our current milestones are, what are the main fundamentals of the SAFE network, there are totally 20 fundamentals that you guys can have a look at. Uh, there's also an FAQ section where you guys can see the most commonly asked questions about the SAFE network, what is made safe, how do we do, uh, where can you find more projects, where can you find more information. And the best part is we're completely open sourced. So this is basically a GitHub page and here you can see all the projects that we're currently working on, the milestones and all that information. So what we're going to cover in this video is basically we're going to have a look at the .NET uh, application which is built using the Safe Network APIs. So we're going to build a, a D app, a console D app using uh, C Sharp. So let's get started. I'm currently present in the get involved page so here you can find various ways in which you can be a part of a community so we have a community where we have a lot of people who are really interested they come up with a lot of questions uh, they try out our applications they build their own applications using our APIs um, any question you have we also post weekly dev updates or what we have been up to for that particular week any information you have you want to share anything you want to ask any questions I would say feel free to use the forum and we also have a developers forum if you have any development specific questions so coming back here um, so you can start developing I would say the best place to get started would be a dev hub website where here you can see we have tutorials for a couple of languages we have Node.js, we have web development we have android dotnet and xamarin um, so today we are going to go over a simple console d app which is basically using dotnet um, and here you can see a list of d apps that we currently have uh, you can try all of these out at the particular state in, in its in it's, it's a POC, it's a demo, if it's released, all that information is present here as well. So in case you guys have any applications which are developed and you want us to list it here, you can let us know as well. So I've just opened up the .NET tutorial page and as you guys can see this is basically a desktop app uh, which is built using the .NET framework. So .NET framework is basically a development platform by Microsoft using which you can build applications for Windows, Windows Phone, uh, Windows Server and stuff like that. So there's also .NET Core using which you could build cross-platform applications, you know, for Linux, uh, Mac, Windows and so on. In this tutorial, we're just going to look at .NET framework. So if you guys just open up our GitHub repository, where we have uh, so basically here we have two branches we have a master branch and a boilerplate branch if you guys are not familiar with github or git i would say it's completely fine we'll just go over all the steps so here we have two branches we have a master branch and a boilerplate branch so basically in the master branch we have all the code that's already present and you guys just can run it and have a look uh, and try out the app uh, on the other hand on the boilerplate branch um, the, it's basically a place where you can copy paste code from the tutorial and try things out yourselves. So I would say um, it's more of a template where the code isn't exactly present but you can follow the tutorial along and you can paste it into the boilerplate branch and you could run it. So it's, it's more of a learning and understanding. So coming back here, um, there are a couple of prerequisites that you guys might require. Uh, you would require git to clone that particular repository from github visual studio is required for you guys um, as well as the safe browser so the safe browser isn't actually a must so um, i would say there are three ways in which you guys can run your application so we have the mock network and the non-mock network so the mock network is meant for developers who are trying to build applications who want to test it out but at the same time they don't want to try the live network so you have the mock network 
and for the mock network you can try out like the current desktop application you can try out just using the mock version of the safe browser or you can try out just using the APIs the mock version so to recap on that uh, we have two types of network that you guys can try out when building applications we have the mock and the non mock the mock is mainly used by developers when you're trying out building apps you want to test it out and see it's not meant yet for the live version and the live network where you're good you're happy with how your application is and you want to release it out and and try it out so when trying out the mock network there are two versions two ways to do it i would say so first is using the mock version of the safe browser uh, the other is using a mock version of the apis so currently we're just going to go over the mock version uh, as the tutorial goes and finally in our last topic we're going to go over migrating to the alpha 2 network where we're going to talk about the live network so this is the application what it's going to look like after we're done with the tutorial so uh, it's asking us if you want to use the safe browser or we just want to use a random account so as i mentioned this tutorial is only using the mock network for now we're going to look at the live network a bit later on so let's say i don't have the safe browser installed as for now so i'm going to give no and as you guys can see um this tutorial which talks about performing some very basic operations in the network like adding an entry updating an entry deleting an entry and basically just displaying all the entries so let me add an entry so i'm going to give my name as the key and let me give my second name for the value and let's display that value there it is let's update the value so my first name was my key and i'm going to my first name for the value as well let me display it there we go it's updated let's delete that particular entry the key was yes that was my first name and let's display the list again and it says zero entries so as you guys can see it's a very basic application which is just meant to perform these four operations in the network so let's have a look so what i'm going to do is i'm going to close this close my visual studio as well and let's go with the initial steps in setting up the basic skeleton so i have my powershell open here you guys can use any uh command prompt that you guys are comfortable with so let me just copy paste this so if you guys do not have git install so right now what it's doing is it's cloning the files which we previously saw in github so if you scroll up uh we did have a look at this before so this was basically if you remember the two branches i spoke about the boilerplate and the master branch so we're just cloning the boilerplate branch for now and that was basically what we did using this particular command and let's go into the respective repository as you guys can see it's basically the same thing that was available here the same structure so basically this repository has two examples this desktop example and this mobile example you guys so today we're going to look at the desktop example so let's just do that let me open up just give me a minute ah uh, Yep so this was basically the repository in which I had set it up and it contains the desktop and the mobile example we're going to open desktop and then we're going to open this particular solution I'm opening it using my visual studio 2019 Let's give it a moment Okay I'm just going to go a little bit over the project structure here so we have a separate project for a mock version and a live version and this project is meant for the tests you guys can have a look at a couple of tests this is a single test here and there's a shared code which is used by both the mock project and the live project so currently we are in the master branch so the way you can check that is just by hitting git branch that's the master branch 
and we have finally this step which is remaining so if you guys remember i told you that we have two branches the master branch and the boilerplate branch the boilerplate is basically the template so let's move to the boilerplate branch so that we can try out the tutorial so you guys can see it says switched to boilerplate branch and you can hit git branch again to make sure the boilerplate branch i already have visual studio open here let me reload it and here you guys can see the branch as well you can switch to master branch from visual studio as well directly so let's go over the tutorial part here yep we've opened up the solution and one thing here is that the architecture that is currently supported is only x64 so if you guys go here and open any of these two projects and go to the properties part you guys can see it's already targeted at x64 currently we don't support x86 so going back here and the package that we're currently using is madesafe.safe app uh, NuGet is basically a package manager using which you can download any package you want and for using safe network APIs the package you'd be using is madesafe.safe app and let's right click on our solution and go to manage NuGet packages So in installed, you can already see that Mace Safe App is already installed. If you're setting up a new project, you wouldn't have this. You could just browse and then select. Yeah, and you would just install it. So here, there's an update available, so it's showing me the update. If you guys have not installed, then the version would not be displayed here. Let me just update it. Great, now that's done. Let's go back to the tutorial. We are going to now look at connecting to the mock network. So there are two ways of doing that. We can either use the mock version of the safe browser or use uh, mock authenticator APIs. We're going to look at both of these methods. So the first step would be to install safe browser. I already have installed it. If you guys haven't, please use this link. It's basically going to point here. And it's a part of the prerequisite where you guys can open this link and have a look. So if you're using a mock version, it would basically be dev. And if it's for the live network, it's going to be this one without the dev. You can choose whichever platform you're currently working on. So let's go back. So our next step would be to add a mock flag to our project so let's just go to our conditional compilation symbols for the mock network example project so that's my mock network example I go to properties and I go to build and I can add in my symbol here so what this one does is it basically adds your safe app mock auth binding DLL by adding this compilation symbol using which you can use the mock APIs so you can open up your safe browser and basically create an account and log in. As you guys can see, it's a mock version of the safe browser. I've already done that. So the next step would be to create uh, an auth request from your console app and send it to the browser. So let's just add this code in your generate encoded app request async. So it's basically in our helper class, as you mentioned, and we have generate encode app request here. Let's just add that. So what this does is we're generating an authentication request here, and we're going to send it to the browser using which you can authenticate it. So more information about containers can basically be found uh, in the discover page, uh, in the dev hub. So going back here, yeah. So basically we need to make sure this function returns and encoded authentication request. So let's just do that. Yep, everything looks fine. I'm gonna save it. 
so now that we have generated the auth request as seen in the previous step the next step would be to send the auth request to the authenticator so it can be authenticated the user can either allow it or deny it and then they can send a response back so the next step would be to send it to the authenticator and we're going to do just that so let's copy this code so we're going to add this in the authentication class present uh, in which we're going to add it in the authenticate with browser async function so basically i'm present in the authentication class and authenticated browser async so let me just add that code here let's move to the next line okay so this generate encode auth request was the previous function we just added which basically returns an encoded auth request if you just generate it and the url format what we is what we're going to do is so this is the format in which the url is going to be where the scheme is basically if it's going to the authenticator it's going to have save hyphen auth and the encoded string is basically the encoded auth request in our scenario so or if it's basically not going to the authenticator it would basically just be the id so what the authenticator would do is if it's sending the response back to this particular app the scheme is basically going to be the id of this app so and finally we just use process.start url to send the particular uh, process uh, the encoded request to the browser so the next step would be if you guys have the browser open what it would basically do is it would basically show a pop-up where you'd either allow or deny the request and would send back the response so we'll just run the code a little bit later so assuming that you have allowed or denied the request from the browser so you'll have to handle the response here which is coming from the browser let's just do that so we're going to add this in the authentication class in the process authentication response function so let's just add that here so what we're doing here is the res auth response we're getting from the browser uh, we're decoding the auth response we are making sure it's of type auth ipc message and finally from which we are getting a session and we are initializing it so once we're done with that we can move on to performing mutable data operations so as of now we're just going to stick with the mock version of the browser so let's just add mutable data operations to this so let's go here so we're going to look at creating a mutable data adding entries to the mutable data reading updating and moving so first step is basically creating a random private mutable data so let's add this into our data operations class and create mutable data my data operations as there we go create mutable data create a random private mutable data so we're going to have a tag type here you you can choose any tag type you want and we're going to create a random private mutable data here and basically store it in md info so the next step would be to assign permissions to this mutable data so we'll have to add it in the same data operations class and create mutable data so let's insert the permissions so here the permissions we're inserting for this mutable data is insert read update delete and manage permissions as well and finally to insert the data onto the network you will have to use put async so now you can say that we have created a particular mutable data using a particular tag type we have inserted permissions for it and finally we have put it into the network now let's look at adding entries to our mutable data which we just previously created so let's add this to our add entries function in data operations class so what we're doing here is basically creating an entry action handle we are encrypting our key and our value the first parameter is going to be the mutable data info which we just previously created and this is going to be the key and the value that the user is basically going to hit in so we're encrypting our key and our value and finally we are inserting our encrypted keys and value with a handle and finally we are mutating it into that particular mutable data 
let's perform the operation of getting the mutable data entries in this step so let's add this in our get entries function in data operation class it operation class get entries so what we're doing here is we're basically creating uh, entries list where we can hold all our entries which we're going to fetch from the network so what we're doing in this step is we are basically using we're creating a handle and using the handle we are basically fetching the entries as you can see uh, from the encrypted entries list and we're making sure that each of them are not basically zero I'll come back to why we're performing this particular step so here as you can see we are decrypting both the key and the value and then finally this is the list that we had previously created we're adding our key and our value to this list which is of type mutable data entry and finally let's make sure this function returns the entry so let's perform the update operation on mutable data so I'm going to add this into my update entry so there we go update entry I'm going to add this here so what we're basically doing here is so the enter the user enters the key uh, the old key and the value which he wants to update so basically in mutable data you cannot update the key you can only update the value and when you're going to update the value you also need to increment the version so we'll go over that so what we're doing first is this key this previous key which we had previously inserted was encrypted so we're going to encrypt that first so the old key we're going to encrypt it and search for this particular key and there's a new value to be inserted we're going to encrypt this value as well so we're creating an entries handle and you guys as you guys can see here using the old key which was inserted so we're getting the value of this particular key and as you guys can see since the key was encrypted when we added it we are encrypting it here as well and finally we can call the update function which will take a handle which will take the old key it's going to take our new value which we're going to update it to and we'll also have to increment the version as well so this step was previous to get the previous version so we can update it and finally we can mutate it so it's reflected on the mutable data so next let's have a look at removing an entry so this is kind of similar to updating an entry you guys will be able to compare and understand so let's add it into the delete entry function so similarly the user is going to enter a key which he basically wants to delete so since the key which we had added initially was encrypted we'll have to encrypt this key as well same as we did for update so we're going to encrypt this key from the user we're going to create a handle and from this particular key we're going to get the value because when we delete we'll have to update the version as well same as for update so finally we can call the delete async function which will take in the handle which is going to take in the key which you want to delete since it was encrypted when we added it we are encrypting it again as well and finally we are incrementing the version and we are going to call mutate entries async and we are going to feed in the entries handle so that it's reflected onto our mutable data the important thing to know here is that you can update and delete only the value you cannot update and delete the key the key is always going to remain and once the key is added you cannot add another key with the same uh, string it'll have to be different it'll have to be unique basically so coming back to our topic if you remember um, in getting a sync while getting the entries we perform a kind of check here to see if the value dot content count is zero so this is basically because let's just say you added in a particular uh, key and a value and later on you have deleted that value so what's going to happen is the key is still going to be present but it's not going to have a value so this is an important check which we perform to make sure that the value is present and only if it's present do we actually display it to the user that's it for this tutorial guys we're going to be wrapping up on a final note we're just going to you could try out the live network alpha 2 network right now as well this is the code you've already added the code for the data operations and stuff so you can just 
set the live network example console app and you can run it and try it out the steps are basically mentioned here you will need the live version of the browser like similar to the mock version of the browser we tried out and if you guys have any questions more information any other d apps you guys want to try out or you want to know a little bit about the technology of the safe network there's a lot of information open for you guys any questions regarding this if you guys are stuck anywhere or you need any help you can drop your questions into our forum that's it guys thank you